And if you thought match of the week would not deliver, then boy, oh boy, were you wrong. B-boy, in fact, were you wrong. <laughs> Welcome back. It's IG. It's JDG at one apiece. After JDG just closed out game two, I'm Hysterics. This is Mr. Clement Shu. And I tell you what, we got a series on our hands because it has to end here. Yeah, it's going to go all the way to Game 3, the first Game 3 that we're going to see from Invictus Gaming. Yeah. They probably had to cancel their dinner re reservations. There's like, sure. sorry, we thought we would be there by 8.30, but uh, we can't make it this time 9 around. 9.30, we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really hope that this is a wake-up call for Invictus Gaming. Yeah. I felt like they got away with a, a couple loose plays here and there, and the biggest test for me is going to be on Coach Maffa. Because yeah. in the past, they did have Coach Kim with them all the time. He was the one that was shouting and hollering at the players to shape up, to play a little bit more seriously. Yep. They don't have Coach Kim anymore. It's going to be up to Mafa, who self-describes himself as a more timid person, mm. to really whip the players in shape. He has to take the belt out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, um, for game number three, you know, wh whatever he does, Clevett. Um, for Coach Marfa, I remember in the interview, he was he was quite, yeah, he said he was quite timid as well. He became yeah. friends with a lot of the players, and he, he felt like he couldn't kind of bridge that gap. But for Invictus Gaming, member, it was more of their personalities coming out in that very, very second game. I'm not concerned that this is, you know, a brand new change that Invictus Gaming are, are, are going forward making some of these mistakes. But I, I'm... Uh, the opposite of concern with JDG and for B-Boy, who is our MVP after game number two. Yeah, really? Showing his uh, old teammate Ning how to play the AD carry role. 44% of the Not damage. Bad. That has to be a season high. That has to be a season high. I, I think the well, highest I've seen is 37% from, uh, uh, from no. Yagao. Well, so. last night we did actually see 54% oh, from, from our Zoe, from our uh, night Zoe. Oh, from night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that game definitely happened. So... Not a high, but still up there. 44%, nothing to scoff at. And I think the most important thing is that he did flip the lane on Jackie Love. Jackie yep. Love, our rookie of the year, played the Sivir matchup into the Ezreal. That should have been a winning lane, a pushing lane. But with Voy, he was able to switch it up on him, get those early kills, and just watch the snipe that he does right here. There's so many targets that he can take down. That was very fast com combo going for the Essence Flux into the Mystic shot. A four-man arcane shot, a true shot barrage. Yeah. Woo! That's it, 630 base damage alone. Absolutely on each target. And, and Bavoy was very quiet towards the start of this game. It was when these a lot more of these explosive team fights came out that Bavoy was oh. just acting them out. Look at that beautiful arcane shift away from Balan's Rakan as well. Mm. Just keeping himself safe through that entire and fight. Bavoy, he loves Ezreal. He'll play it over and over again. Imp actually shares a similar style with him down in that bottom lane. And for all of you who don't know, Bavoy is, is like the newest member on this team out of yep. out of anyone, essentially. Well, Flawless, of course, adds himself into the roster. Imp as well. We said JDG. They were meant to be you know, this fresh roster that, that could rival some of the top teams. They haven't done that so far. But if they can beat Invictus Gaming in this Game 3, then new expectations and new rivalry set up for JDG. And talking about Invictus Gaming, I believe we're going to have a player change that's going to come up. Yeah. Because Daddy Duke is here to set the ship straight. With no the shy. Like, they're like, no, <laughs> the shy's fold in that game. Let's bring in Duke. <laughs> to be fair, though, I mean, it's, it's still probably going to have a similar impact. We know how these players are in comparison to each other. The yep. shy, arguably the best top laner in the world. Not even arguably. It's pretty much been set in. The Duke closely behind. Yes. But I will say that uh, from from the coaching staff themselves, Duke has been the one screaming more with the team. Mm. I do think he will bring a more serious tone, at least to all the players. And he is a very experienced player. Oh, yeah. Double world champion in two different regions. People really forget about the Duke a lot of times because the Shy is just so flashy with his plays. Yeah. But Duke is an excellent top laner. Yeah. And I feel like if he's been with the team uh, more for this 2019 split, He's going to come in and he's going to close out for Invictus. So Gaming. change in top lanes, which is you know uh, is going to be pretty important here for Invictus Gaming. Yeah. JDG, as far as we know, are not making any substitutes whatsoever, running in with the same roster from Game Two. And I like that. After that win, you're feeling good. You don't bring Imp in. You don't bring Levi back in. Run flawless yeah. and run Bevoy after getting 44% damage. I feel like that game flawless really had his confidence up. You know, he he was going up against something like a Karthus, which really isn't not going to offer okay, you a lot of pushback. You're never going to see him. You see, oh, he's at Scuttle, right. Yeah. Enough information to last the game. 
Pretty much. So he had a he had a fun time getting familiar on something that can play like a hunter killer, go into the enemy jungle, and I want to see more from that. I want to see the Lee Sin, I want to see the Karthus, yep. and I want to s oh not the Karthus, oh, sorry, no. the Kha'Zix, <laughs> and I want to see him fulfill the function that Clid previously had on JD Gaming. He was the first Blood King of 2018. They had so many kill combinations with Yako. That's the big thing that we used to talk about. You know, Mazahar Lee Sin or Jarvan, uh, Jarvan with the Galio coming in as well. Yep. They were a two-man tag team all over the map. That synergy has not been shown yet, no. but I feel like it can develop between I, I think players. we got an insight that game into how the new JDG is going to look. Alternate roster in game two just looked better but as you said there the difference between flawless and that's anti-cup spillage if i sorry just a side note in lol esports across the world we have had a lot of issues with our drinks and a lot of people out there have recommended sippy cups and Why i don't think we're do far off I, I like well that's a lot essentially more. the sippy cup isn't it actually here in china i've noticed straws go in like things like like coffee cups there yeah. have been straws, in, not not with coffee especially, but straws going in that little hole in coffee cups, and I think that's ingenious. It really is smart. Like, I have to say, like twenty twenty nine. Yeah, the uh, the drink game in China is very very advanced. Well, I haven't got that far yet, but for Duke, he's going to be coming in for the shy in game three. Normally, it's like other way around. We'll start with Duke, and then the shy will come in when yeah. everything seems lost or everything is just going a bit topsy turvy. <laughs> In this series, again, the other way around. So, finally we get to see the debut of Duke against JDG, changing up the momentum and a bit of that tempo in the top side of the map against Zoom. Well, Duke does have pretty much a similar champion pool overall. He does play the Scion, does play a lot of the Aatrox too. Yeah. Has a couple of great showings on it. And then I just want to see a chemistry change from Invictus Gaming. There are a lot less smiles on this roster currently. Rookie oh. does look like he's under a bit of stress. After game one. <laughs> IG entered the arena so happy, so comfortable, so casually. Not anymore. A loss here could even out IG and actually propel JDG plus teams like FPX, teams like Sooning. Oh, Sooning would be so our behind. first place team. That's true. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I Quote me. Why not? If Invictus Gaming lose right here, uh, I'm sorry, lose right here. Oh, no, no, oh, we've already lost our only flawless team so far. No, no, With no, they're just gaming. Yeah. Dropping, uh, dropping game two. Technically flawless in matches, yeah. we'll find out. A bit of disappointment there. Nah, never mind. Well, I think teams should always be chasing what EDG did back in but the day. We like, don't want to see, we don't want to see wins. one team ahead. Like, we don't, uh, we don't want to see one team I so far it. ahead. No. I enjoy it. Really? Well, you're weird. So <laughs> we don't want to see one team so far ahead that it's just, they're invincible. And IG at the moment, they look like that team until JDG picked up okay. that win. But it gives all the rest of the people something to chase after. Sure. Perfection. Mm. That's always the embodiment of perfection. That's all we want. It, it drives people. Yeah. It's, it, it creates hype, you know? <laughs> yeah, but no, it's I, I, no, I, no, why I did know. you have to do it, no, IG? <laughs> so, with Invictus Gaming, now we ask a, a greater question with Duke coming into the top lane, if they can firm up that draft. We'll, we'll mm. mo most likely think it's going to be a mo much more serious draft, that the Karthus, although is suitable to a lot of yes. different compositions, won't make another appearance. I, I don't actually dislike the previous draft. I feel like the Game 2 draft actually made a lot of sense. Okay, Their bot lane could push up. They should have Rakan there to support the Karthus when he's jungle invading. The top side, the Shy has always won the matchup for some reason. For some reason, always, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, it's, Play it befuddles me, but he wins does. Nasty. But and so they have pushing side lanes. They can protect their jungle that way. They mm. can scale up. They have an early game aggression with Jace. That comp was fine. I felt like Mafa did a great job in the draft, and also it was set up for Ning to get an MVP. Yeah. And it's, the only problems with their bot lane went completely haywire. It was went sideways very, very early in the matchup. Level 3 gank, double kill. Yeah. And then Flawless walks mid, helps get a kill there for yeah. Yagao, then walks to the top side, helps pressure out just that little bit more, get deeper vision, walks back mid. And from there, it was just history. It was just easy yeah. to progress forward for JDG. You know, Invictus Gaming, they just need a little bit of whooping from, uh, from Mafa, you know. And yeah, set everything we, straight. We, I, I really felt the draft was fine. We, we a lot of people say it was not a serious draft. I felt like it was draft there. They had a lot of potential to go sideways because Jace and Karthus don't exactly cover, cover each other that well. But the yep. side lanes were good. I, well, I liked it. Clement, 
let's see anyway, because even though there might not have been anything wrong with the draft, getting out of that mentality of game two is going to be important, and when they change just purely to give Duke a bit of an edge up in that top side of the map, he's already lost his Aatrox, with Lissandra being the final ban, so your, cow will, your gal will try something new, but Zoom most likely will not. Yep, still going for the exact same pick. Urgot, oh. still the number one overall blue side first pick. Yep. But Ning. <laughs> there we go. All right, all right. That's uh, a lot more serious no uh, matter where that's going. Yeah, I'm pretty sure who got the whooping. <laughs> <laughs> well, Camille. So, where is the siren going to go? Maybe a question for a little bit later on. Invictus Gaming. Probably going to predict this one. Boy, changing it up. The oh, boy, excuse there me. we go. Zaya Rakan. Draft a winning lane. And they will come. And that's what I want to see from JD Gaming. Strong lanes to start them off. Yeah. Also scaling potential coming in from uh, Zaya as well. Man. Flawless just has that journey down to the bottom lane now. Morgana picked up. First time here. Uh, for today at the very least. Not sure we've seen too many Morganas here in the LPL, but... Fits Bowler. Yeah. Uh, it does punish the Rakan quite heavily if he gets tagged by the Binding while going in. Pretty much cancels out the engage. That it does. This music is very epic. Oh, it's it, so tense. It's very, like, almost Final Fantasy-esque. I like what Invictus Gaming is doing right here. They're taking Flawless off of his comfort zone. Saying, you had a great game on the Kha'Zix, no more. Why would you? Why would you leave that open after the Flawless's performance? He's going to have to carry on something else. Lee Sin is still available. With Victus Gaming are looking for an AD carry in this next spot. Caitlyn taken away. We've also seen... Uh, I, I think it's going to be a Kaisa pick most likely for Invictus Gaming. Let's just band away. What's the final ban? Another AD carry? No, it is Rookie's Zoe. Huh. Interesting that Yagao does not want to leave that open for himself. I I do like the idea. So one of the key weaknesses of the Zaya pick is that if enemy composition outranges you, you have a very hard time of getting all your damage off. You really need to them to walk into range for the uh, the blade caller to do its work. So just taking out something uh, of a poke composition. Now a bit more gap close on the side of Invictus Gaming. Galio for rookie. More than likely, something we haven't seen too much, though, oh. is this Swain. Now, for Yagao, would suit him so well. Zoom has played the champion quite a bit, too. Yeah, both of them can play into the Swain, but there I do is. believe it's going to be a top lane Swain. Mid lane Urgot does counter out the Galio quite well, and JD Gaming are setting themselves up for all three winning lanes. Oh, flawless. Last time on the Gragas was not pleasant to the eyes. I'm not talking about Gragas himself. <laughs> talking about Flawless and his performance against FPX. He's looking to redeem himself in this game three. And I do think he has a setup to do so. All three of his lanes are super strong earlier on. All he needs to provide is just a little bit more kill threat. A couple of crowd control incoming. It's very easy for the Gragas to close off on kills if the lanes are already pushing towards tower. While Invictus Gaming, they have a composition that is focusing much more like an RNG comp would work. Yeah. Focusing a lot more damage onto the Kai'Sa bot lane. Jackie Love loves Kai'Sa. Probably the most played Kai'Sa in the league, I would assume. If you put him up next against Uzi, Uzi will dabble in some of the Sivers, some of the different picks like Jackie Love just did, but always comes back to the Kai'Sa. 20 seconds we now find out. That is a Swain top. So Yagao picks up the Ergot. Surprisingly enough, zoom on the Swain and taking on Duke. This matchup, now the one to watch? To a degree. I mean, Sion is boring, but we'll see a bit more. Yeah, Grass of the Undying Urgot, or even uh, Kleptomancy, uh, not Urgot, uh, Swain. Even Kleptomancy Swain can be played against Sion, something that doesn't actually pre present a lot of kill threat earlier on. Yeah. And this is exactly how JD Gaming wants to play the game. They want to have strong early lanes. They want to have a frontline-centric team composition. They've got it between the Urgot and the Swain, where they can both get get in. I feel like in this drafting phase, I give it much more heavily over to JD Gaming this time, even compared to game two. Ah. That's what they need, Clement. They need your support. Yeah, because this is this is make it or break it. JDG have not had many games before Chinese New Year. And to go up against IG so much earlier in the year, before your team gets together, before you start making big changes to your roster 
or even just the way you play is, let's just say it, unfortunate for JDG, but they've turned bad to worse for IG <laughs> instead of themselves. And JDG now feel like they're in a driver's position. They definitely are. I, I really love this draft coming out from JD Gaming. I feel like they have their work cut out for them. Invictus Gaming, on the other hand, it, it's going to have to come, come from rotational plays. How does it start? How does it end? Very different questions. Game three of JDG and Invictus Gaming. Our matchup of the week is delivered. And now it's time for one team to shine. Both fans out in force. There's still like, still a couple of cheers going on in the backside. What is with these level ones? I'll never know. The Winds of War and a Dark Binding onto your gal. That's enough. So Jackie Love has definitely watched Season 8 Worlds. <laughs> this was a play that was done. You could even say he was at Season 8 Worlds. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You could definitely you, you say could that. Definitely, I think you could. You uh, could go even a little bit further. Maybe he won that tournament. Yeah, no, I reckon he did as well. Yeah. Your gal, oh, that's a rough start. We'll be able to trade back as Urgot does against Gallio, but Rookie getting the wins where he needs it. Saw a couple openings from uh, both RNG and Gen.G in that tournament where they used that tactic with Rakan, uh, early uh, early W max first, yep. just to get that cheesy level one. Jackie Love somehow smells it out and avoids it. Well, standard starts from the jungle though has been a series of the junglers Ooh. as Lu Mao just takes a massive binding. Jackie Love will not flash as he's using Cathy and Rain on to b -Void. There's also more of a defensive summoner setup coming out from um, b -Voy. Is taking the fleet footwork instead of the lane trading potential of lethal tempo. Yeah, that's true. Especially with the Zyra Khan matchup. So again, playing it more safe. There's also what Reckless does. Compared uh, to most other LPL. I don't think you should talk about him right now. Oh, okay, Not a lot sorry. of people supporting, <laughs> supporting Reckless. Hey, come on. Fnatic is all... Oh, they're always going to make it. Some shape, some form. Zero and five club. It's not the greatest start, all right? <laughs> I cannot deny. Yeah, you cannot deny. Oh. You can. There's kill threat here. Rookie what? doesn't have Ignite, though. I've never seen that in the matchup. <laughs> no. And, of course, Rookie changes it. Zoom making this matchup go at least how it should. Oh, look at the wave position for Duke as well. That's not an envious position to be. That's perfect control from Zoom. He has it parked right outside of his tower. That he and does. Have Duke, ha does have Duke on half health. Floors down to the bottom side now. Look how far this wave is pushed out from Invictus Gaming. Floors has enough mana. Jackie Love and Balan in a bit of trouble. He comes out the flash forward, responded by Jackie Love. Balan uses the black shield onto the wrong member. And that's going to be first blood. It's over. To B boy and once again just a straight up level three gank coming in from flawless to get the kill it honestly it's a little too easy for him at this point yeah i, I don't expect players to die to that type of a, a gank that but frequently. it's happened two games in a row now yeah Force has been on different champions and the first game it was simply a first blood because jackie love and Balan just walked too far forward i just feel like ig's bot lane is trying to front too much like, a lot of times they're trying to represent threat when they don't actually have it. Like, hey, you, guess what? Ning might be behind me. Oh, no, you called the bluff. <laughs> well, speak of the devil, he is actually behind enemy lines at the moment, taking Gromp. There was a, not a steal away. There was actually a steal away from Ning of the blue buff, moving into vertical jungling, and I don't think Flawless has opted in just yet. Zoom, not going to be caught out, but spotted by a ward means that Ning gives away his position and that he has the blue buff. And Zoom is very far ahead of this matchup currently. He's already one teleport up. Doesn't have to never move anymore. Hook shot into wall shot. Ning straight on in. Zoom will have to flash here. When does it get burnt? Right then and there. The sweep doesn't land. Ning, here it comes, comes the Gragas with Predator procced immediately. Juke blocks him out of the way. And that TP cannot be cancelled by Rookie. He just simply has to fly back to mid lane. And how is Rookie going to get back from mid in this position? This is just disaster all over the map for IG. Multiple summoners burned. Ning was forced to back as well. Still hasn't taken his blue buff. Isn't actually heading there. Heading to the top side of the map instead. 
Flawless hasn't queued on that the blue buff that was stolen was his until Lumao jumps in and suspicions are confirmed. So, Invictus Gaming, they're really playing on a knife's edge right here. Both of their soul lanes don't have their teleports anymore. That means one successful gank from Flawless and they could snowball it very, very far away. First spot hasn't snowballed anything just yet. Hang on, pause that little train of thought before he's not the one who's going to be rooted down, waiting for the feathers to fly in his direction. Roots down the support. Bivoy, favorable trade against Jackie Love and Bowland. The Zyra Khan Pal coming through as well as that first blood and extra damage. Yep, just straight up outplaying the enemy team comp in that situation. Did have the minion wave advantage as well. But this is really what should be expected from these two. Yes. Clever I'll agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I, I was like, where, where, oh, where was that going? Where were you going? Oh. I just want to see how much JD Gaming's bot lane could actually push a winning uh, winning bot lane. A lot of times, style. Yeah, Void typically plays very, very defensive. Well, the Void now has the tools for success. Zoom, getting very suspicious. Where is Ning? Well, he's not in this brush, but he is in a brush. But his sacrifice to the top lane for pressure means that turret plating is going down in the bottom. Zoom's going to push out. He's level 6. Going to have to pop the Demon Flare straight away. Where is it? Finally, Zoom in 4. But with the healing, probably not going to be enough. Duke does ult. Hang on. Turns Zoom around. right back into the fray. Duke looking for the knockup. Will find it. Ning doesn't have a wall to spam off. But Flawless is coming in. Ning in dead doo-doo. And Flawless jumps Ooh. in. The Gragas looking great. Can he get the knockup? Zoom survives. And this is all gone topsy-turvy for IG. 2k gold lead. And Duke slowed down before he can get the kill. And there's no one incoming on the side for Invictus Gaming. They can't really get the mid lane moving to get the hero's entrance. That's a losing matchup for Rookie as well. So even though they get the initial jump, Zoom is able to survive for such a long time, keep his health up, and wait until reinforcements arrive. That demon flare just popped. And nothing more needed to be said. Zoom, this is the potency of Swine. Yeah, he does have a good initial dodge onto the Q as well. Doesn't get the extra knock up. They fall in, but they're getting qu pretty queasy. They know that people are incoming. The mid lane's already left, and they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They want to retreat, but they can't find the correct path. With all those summoners burn as well, you got to look at what the cost Ooh. was. Double flash for top and jungle out of IG. Now, it was responded by, by JDG, but you just look at what they received for it. A kill goes over to Zoom and Flawless. And this Swain is going to be massive. Like... There's nothing that's going to contest the Swain in, in terms of the mid game. He gets his ROA going. He is a real big monster with that. Yeah. And I do expect JD Gaming to just take map control after this and snowball every single drink. And because Ning has had to move for that response on that side note, his blue buff is still there. <laughs> Ning hasn't had a chance to pick up his own blue buff and Flawless has now respawned. He hasn't needed one, although Gragas can be quite mana hungry, so... Take out of that what you will. Ning's just left as a response to get some of that vision control. But yeah, you you mentioned earlier, Clement, the snowballing potential from this team and, and what could JDG really do? Well, we finally have a semblance of an answer. I think we're continuing to work towards a better one. Exactly. Invictus Gaming, they're great players, but are they good enough to play themselves out of losing matchups? I don't really think so. Like, JD Gaming, you have to give them some respect. And with this draft, you should, you should really be looking at a slow start. Things have slowed down for the benefit of Invictus Gaming, but it's a 2k gold lead for JDG at 9 minutes in the game. Mountain Drake is sitting there waiting to be taken, but Ning is going nowhere near it, even with that vision. Look at the bottom side for Invictus Gaming, making sure Flawless can move nowhere near that bottom lane, which is the skyrocket potential. But then you look top, and you look at JDG's control up there, and you think, mm, Flawless probably going to pay a repeat gank towards that top side. At the very least, it's going to be a herald in the next couple of minutes for JD Gaming. Now, IG, the composition they're playing, if you guys remember from Rift Rivals, this was the exact comp that they took down SKT with. Yep. Same carries, the same combo between the Galio and the uh, and the Camille. But what they really need to do is uh, they really need to get some mid-game action going. This is a very much a Wombo combo composition, and it doesn't fare well in extended laning phases. It's different when you go up against the Dumpling Brothers. Who are showing that they're not to be taken lightly. That dragon does drop from IG as a response. 
And SKT is one thing, but JDG apparently another. Good respect coming out from Rookie. Make sure that he dodges out on all the damage, uh, the potential gank. You'd hope so. Fancy footwork from both mid laners throughout the series so far. And it's been a long series. Some of the longest games for Invictus Gaming. But we're breaking a lot of stats here today with their first loss. And hopefully we don't just see a blowout here from Victus Gaming. Who knows Cheeky what the weeks play would from have. IG. But JD Gaming could potentially match this. They have a four-man in the top side as well. Zoom knows that he's here. Demonic Ascension is available for Zoom, but in comes Kaiser. Jackula perfectly timed. Ults in. Zoom, there's no way. Demon Flare unable to be proc, so Jackula <laughs> takes the kill. Such a good Prey Seeker. A Void Seeker right there. Yeah, it means that they have to back off to Rift Herald as well. Perfectly timed. Zoom even had his flash, but he still tacked him straight out of stasis. Well, Zoom dead. 15 seconds. He does have teleport. And remember, big cooldown on Demonic Ascension this early in. The patience might wear thin, but Rift Herald is just dropping down. Flawless looking for the still explosive cast. He will find it into the fight now with the ulti burn by Yagao. Ning is burning down. Uh -oh, Here it comes. To go. Right into the belly again. It's Yagao. It's the collapse. Zooms back in. Jackie Love, he wants revenge, but Balan healed back up. Invictus Gaming in the meat grinder. What? Rookie to recover it away. Somehow Jackie Love is still alive, but not for long. The Dumpling Brothers collapse, and they say, you're next for dinner. Can Rookie actually get out of here? That oh, was pretty out. insane from Jackie Love. I thought that was going to be a clean sweep coming out for JD Gaming. But he finds two kills in the mix midst of everything. That, that, that would have been game over if Jackie Love did not find those kills right then and there. Yeah, well, let's look at it again, Clement. Yeah, Yagao does find a lot of uh, damage onto Rookie early on, forces him out of the matchup. Flawless with a great steal back onto the Herald. Wow. And, uh, you know, again, a good Flawless play right there. Knocks Ning into basically kill range. They do get the first kill. And look at the positioning. It's a 4v3 collapse coming in from JD Gaming. There's nowhere for their players to run. Jackie Love with the heal keeps people alive for just a second. Goes back in, which is essentially a 4v1 play, and finds two kills to back it up. Jackie Love getting two. BF Sword in hand now. The Kaisa has her condition, but Bavoy has the Storm Razor. So it's a comparison, but not much at that. They were farming down on the bottom lane while this fight was going on. Uh, I mean, sure, JD Gaming did still come out ahead of that play, but... Whew. You know, Jackie Love is bringing on his carry pants. That was an excellent performance for him. Oh, he has to. Rift Herald going to charge down this mid lane turret, though, Clement. At 13 minutes, free gold. Look, 410 to both Flawless and Yagao. There's just so much free money there. It's going to even get another charge. And Rookie's just going to have to deal with it. JDG in the driver's seat once again. That's a 4K gold lead at 13 minutes. And you're right. Jackie Love now has the onus to carry in this game. But with JDG, the pressure split across Zoom. Yagao, even Flawless adds into the mix with the full AP Gragas and Bavoy. JD Gaming just have so many threats on the map right now. It's going to come down to these picks to the, keep them alive. Oh, Hexec Ultimate Explosive Cast doesn't land. Flawless should die here. Eventually drops down and Yagao has nothing to say. Duke for the chase, but it's already over. A big pick and Zoom just left to push down the turret. And you can feel the tension rising in Jing Ning, Jingdong Stadium right now. IG are clawing themselves back into the game. Horrendous laning phase all across the board. But they're finding those kills. The laning phase hasn't exactly ended, or at least partially, with bottom lane top and top lane bot. Bavoy and Luamau able to get some more turret planning, and it's just disappeared now. So that turret is going to be as flimsy as a rock in a sandbag. If you're wondering what that is, I'm not sure. I'm going to think about it afterwards. Yagao getting pushed out by Ning, but they know where this jungler is, and Flaws immediately heads to the top side of the map. Yep, a lot was expended for Invictus Gaming to get that gank in going, but unable to connect on the stun. Does mean they give away the top tower for free. More gold over to this Zaya Rakan. I have hope for a Kaiser late game, but even more so, Zaya is still such a threat towards this 40, 50 minute mark. Well, let's go 30, just to be realistic. Because at this point, huge bounties on both Bavoy and Yagao. 450 apiece. JD Gaming are incoming with basically three damage dealers. This is one of the strongest mid lane compositions you could possibly draft up in the meta right now. Uh, I, I honestly feel like the only thing that Invictus Gaming can continue to do is just find those picks with Ning. 
and yep. hope that the kills really do fall into Jackie Love. They do have Rookie. Here they go. And now they're going to use Ning's him. Ning's not spotted. Ning's around the side. Bavoy tagged by Jackie Love. Remember, he can just ult to bring in Rookie and Ning will follow. A lot of rotations easily made here by Invictus Gaming. Challenging around this dragon. Juke's just been caught out. He has to flash. And good burn there by Zoom. That might enable the turret or maybe this dragon. The question is, do IG actually want to go in onto this? JD Gaming, they basically have full summoners on on the bot lane. Great position and great concave on the ramp as well. They stop the dragon. There's still a ward in that pit. It's under full vision. They want to bait IG into the fight with this gold lead. Ning's in first into the backside. They've they caught out for Voyal. Lamau, excuse me. And again, Rookie straight on in as well. But at the front of the fight, Fear Beyond Death, perfectly done. IG wanted to fight. Jackie Love is left for the hero play, but no more. Zoom chasing him down. And Zombie Scion has absolutely no course in this fight. JDG, they win out again. They wiped the floor with Evictus Gaming. It looked really good on the front end where you could see there was a double knockup from Duke onto the top lane, but you really can't kill Zoom at this point. Zoom and Yagao with Urgot and Swain, that composition is not going to fall down to the damage that Jackie Love can provide at this point in time. And I honestly felt like that was one of the situations where Evictus Gaming needed to say, we're going to have to hang on longer in this game. We need to cut our losses. This is not a fight that we can win. The enemy team has a concave. They have the power spike lead over us. I I'm not sure this is the fight that they should have gone for. But they took it anyway. Clement walk us through it. And you know, the early game of the fight, I like the idea for going on Numal. That's one target that you can actually snipe out earlier on. And the front line, you can see it was a perfect CC chain between Balan and Duke. But still enough, not enough damage coming out from Jackie Love. That's the main problem. They just don't have the items yet to really deal with the front line. And Swain even finished the fight full health. Yeah. Zoom just walked by everyone, casually, in that fight. He now has his on his hourglass. There's two items on this Swain, two items on Bavoy, with his rapid-fire cannon on the Zaya. And that's the damage. You can tell exactly what was going on. Bavoy just had at it. Yeah, yeah. rookie. It just free damage onto the front line that was right in front of him. And just look at the damage difference for Swain right now. That's basically double the damage that Duke was able to output for Jackie Love, even though he was auto-attacking the entire way. Still only 1,700 damage. Hang on, cameraman. Look back mid. We're seeing rotations come towards that dragon and JDG. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Get out of here. JDG waiting for the bait in and Ning, this red buff is not safe. Flaws comes over. Might say a big old yoink. Yes, he does. <laughs> Doesn't even get hit by the binding. And Flawless makes it look too easy. Cheeky play right in the face of Invictus Gaming. The question really is how can they hold on to this situation? The Zhanyas are completed for JD Gaming's players as well. It's going to be so hard to take anyone down on this roster. And they're just taking more and more gold. 7,000 in the back pocket of JDG. Baron up in 1 minute 30. Duke just left to waddle away on this bottom lane turret. But he cannot even stay. So top lane pressure is going to build out along with the mid lane and heading towards that Baron. Invictus Gaming need a hero play here. They need time. And you're not sure if JDG are going to give it to them. Not really a huge fan of this draft earlier on. Three lanes that didn't have a lot of potential to actually come out ahead. And JD Gaming just punished the laning it leads very, very heavily. You could see that Ning had to go for very risky plays in the top side just to make something work make sure that they had some say in the mid lane, uh, in the mid game. And this just feels like a laning phase overflow coming out from JD Gaming. Definitely talked about how strong their laning phases could be with this composition in game number three. Been a series that I think IG will remember for quite a while, win or lose. At the 19 minute mark, it's getting closer towards that Baron, so hold your thoughts. Balan just has to send a binding just to get near for vision, but Flawless is still here, and Balan shields a bit late. The only team that Invictus Gaming has lost to in the regular split for 2018 has actually been RNG. That's They've right. They've won against every other team. Whether it went to three games or not. This would be absolutely historic for JD Gaming if they're able to take a win here. They haven't found a single match, uh, match win against IG the entire year. In their home arena to boot. This is like, this is how you get into the Chinese New Year. 
Uh -huh. If you want to have a good holiday, if you want to have a great time, you win against Invictus Gaming. You start the ear of the boar off with a victory in your home arena. Ah, We've always had that year. curse in the LPL. Whichever team does start in their own home arena typically doesn't win. Well, maybe trends are there to be broken. Definitely being broken here. You can see that IG, they've now settled down quite a lot, but thinking it could be a little bit too late. Still, Baron hovers up towards that top side. He's not going anywhere. He's stuck in the ground. If you've ever seen the bottom half of Baron, it's quite disgusting. But nevertheless, vision held by JDG in this top side, trying to be cleared out by Invictus Gaming. Well, Flawless just says, this is infernal. This takes my priority. The problem for IG is even if they have the damage, I don't think they can target anyone down easily enough. Uh, all of them have some form of uh, damage negation. See the uh, Gargoyle Stone Plate already up for Yagao. Double Zanias on the top of the jungle. Of course, uh, Zaya herself has the ultimate. Yep. Almost three items as well on the Zaya. It's so hard to actually secure a kill onto JD Gaming. But they still can do it. You look at the rotations that can come through. Duke, Rookie, still have teleport. Grand entrance, or heroic entrance, excuse me, hero's entrance, let's correct myself a third time, is the ultimate available by Rookie. Now has two items with a Morel and Omicron second. Already had the proto belt. Two items on Jackie Love too, so with Quincy's Rage Blade, is maybe a different question. IG are looking for the pick as JDG once again hover around this Baron. So good defense of their own red side jungle. And they do have a potential collapse on Yagao, even though Lirimal is very close. Uh, I feel like the only member they could kill instantly would be Lirimal. Oh, well, hang on. He's Ooh. first ball with Baolan almost lands a binding. Still massive pick potential for Invictus Gaming. It is not over until that Nexus falls down. Flawless Zoom trying to make that a reality as they walk into the base. They see IG off to the side, and they start this one up. But Rookie comes in. Wave play still great from Invictus Gaming. And JDG going to try and waddle away at this, maybe force away the Baron with limited vision by RG. A really good rotation coming in from Duke as well. Gets as much as he possibly can in the bot side and teleports back, not teleport, backs at the last possible moment. Mm -hmm. Successful defense from him as well. Uh, and oh, they're baiting it out. This is oh. so clever. It is spotted out. Oh, uh, okay. So that was an interesting bait. So oh you can't my. see the teleport in Fog of War. Of course. So JD gave me, we're thinking, hey, we're just going to do this teleport bait. That is, that it's is next level it's thinking. <laughs> Even though it didn't work out, I'm sure there's a lot of lulls and question marks going on. But JDG, whatever. At this Jackie point, Love. why not? Flawless just catches them all out. Where's the rest of JDG though? The fight begins oh, again. Great Caught down. Lumel hasn't finished yet though, Clement. And the kill comes before the hero's entrance. Yagao in the middle does not die. Look at where Flawless is though. Jackie Love from front to back. He oh. plays it, but Zoom runs on in. The demons flare, ready in this demonic ascent. And JDG say, IG, get off. We're the new heroes of the Rift. And it's a 3v5 situation. They're still looking for Duke. I don't think he can back success successfully. Zoom can go top as well. Ning is still here. They can force mid, get the inhibitor at the very least. Ning has to back this game. Could just end, or at least an inhibitor go down. All right, hold the phone. Jackie loves up in 10 seconds, but still, JDG getting free re resources here while Ning's top. Yep. Uh, Duke really needs to be looking to get out of here. There's a lot of players that are looking for the collapse at this point. Lure I don't think first. if this game he can come. Yagao's coming in. Crabman finds Ning. It's already a death penalty there for the Scion. See you later. However, Yagao is caught out, and this is where Ning can shine. Zoom gets the Scion. They re-engage. IG turning this around. Two members are dead for JDG. They land the They've walked into the trouble. In comes Jackie Love. Three kills now for IG. Keep on counting. Bavoy and Zoom and the top side of the map. They have to stop here because Baron could be started up for IG. And this is a 2v4 situation. If JD Gaming want this Baron, Zoom has to come in. He does have the teleport, but where can he actually Bavoy land? Bavoy has flash. He needs to make the miracle play. Dodge away from Balan's dark binding. In he goes first. The range advantage. Rookie's on him though. He Gets the root down, takes it. Bavoy for one, the rookie trying to oh, make himself known, with the swipe. but Ning shuts him down, Zoom's still here, Baron on four members, Balan locks him down before getting electrocuted from the power point, known as Zoom, three escape with Baron, and IG are back in this game. And Invictus Gaming pumped back from the abyss, they were pushed to the absolute brink, it looked like such an easy deal for JD to close this out, but 
an overplay on the top side of the map. I don't feel like they needed to chase that hard in the situation, and Rookie had such a good three-man taunt to start this entire fight off. Getting multiple members, tagging them down. They're in full retreat, already two dead on JD Gaming. A perfect binding income from Ballland. Jackie Love able to follow the kill up as well. It looked impossible for Invictus Gaming to actually come back into this game. We said it revolved around this Baron. Colonel, you take a back seat, because this one is not so cut and dry. Only a 6k advantage for JD Gaming going up the Kaisa with the late game. I want to see if she actually finished off the IE yet. There's no smite here. Flawless should just be able to steal this one away. Invictus Gaming don't know who's over the wall because they don't have vision. Just trying to get this blue buff. Flawless. Oh! oh! Dunks the blue buff. And that's the way this game's going, really. It's Flawless Show. Had a lot of great plays earlier on, but can he actually close it out? IG are looking, looking like they have a lot of signs of life. But Invictus Gaming don't have vision over this wall. Drops a control ward. And for JDG, waiting for Invictus Gaming to come into that fog of war because they have that full control. Zoom able to lock down Duke, but still no damage on the take. They found Ning on the side. No explosive cask as Flawless used it to steal the blue buff. So a downside here. Lumao ults immediately, but it's onto the sign. Balan's next onto the side. Favoy turns his attention. Goes golden. They can't lock anyone down. Balan drops down, and JDG get a crucial pick to make sure they stay in control. And it's going to be a double infernal for them as well. IG, they tried to force the mid lane a little bit too hard. Wanted to fork the situation and draw JD Gaming away from the infernal. But unfortunately for them, they just went a little bit too close. That was a very good call on Lumal and says, Hey man, you know what? You guys don't have flashes. I know I can catch up after you, even if I'm running straight at your face. You're not going to be able to get away from this. And that's the issue with IG right now. They cannot go anywhere because anywhere they go on the map literally has no vision. Like right now, JDG playing around that said part of the map with double Infernal Drake and an Ocean. This turret's gonna drop down. Look at where IG are. Mid lane Ning. They still have the Baron buff to get back swiftly. But JDG is just pushing for this inhibitor. Do they actually have to wave clear to keep this out? Duke is stuck with this crowd control. They do get the inhibitor turret, but the engage now from Ning. JDG need to fight this front to back. Right side on ultimate there. Locked in the corner. B-Boy survived, but not for long. Jackie Love still lives in the backside. Perfect ultimate though. Yagal, his fear beyond death. The Dumpling Brothers are here to stay, but locked once down. Again, Zoom the only one here. Duke eventually does drop. It's a massacre of a fight. Ning only just survives. Rookie and Ning run for their lives. Duke eventually does go down in zombie form. It's a two for two left remaining. And what a dive coming out from Invictus Gaming. They take down Bavoy and Luma, the first things in the fight to come back from a 6k deficit. That was not a fight that they were supposed to win. It was not. For JDG, they had the Ocean Drake they can sustain and look for Ning, but they choose not to. It's a little bit too risky. Ning is healing up nicely anyway, but let's take a look back at this close 3 for 3. You have to see how Ning starts this fight. I have to say, Vol does pop his ultimate a little bit too early. Still gets tagged by Duke and his ultimate, and then Ning is able to fo follow up with the kill. Now, the front line for JD Gaming are still doing very, very well, but it hit does come down to the backside that gets picked off immediately in the fight. Blavis was with, with a good turnaround to save his life, but not wow. enough to actually continue the push. And Ning moments away from getting taken down himself. JDG not fully in control of these fights, and that's what you like to see. Look at Zoom. That was one team fight and almost 6k damage. Yeah, he's still doing massive amounts of damage in the front line. He still has Jackie Love in his sights. It's very easy for him to take him down, but that was a fight where I felt if Voight ulted just a little bit sooner, uh, just a bit later, excuse me, and was able to dodge out on Duke's crowd control, JD Gaming would have won the series already. Yeah. That was just one slot, small misplay, but IG, you have to say, they really pushed the edge in that one. Alternatively, if it's any further from JDG, IG come back into this game, and that next Baron, a minute away, comes back into contention. Only 6k gold, now in the head of Duke, locks him down before he is free hitting again. Dangerous moments here from IG, and because of their front line going down, they get two free inhibitors. Maybe the second one less free than the other. And we have to look at Duke, he does have some ultimate available. 
But Zoom with never move can lock one of these carries down. Ning is ready with the hook shot. Walk shot takes it in. Little Mao disrupts him. Hextech ultimate him straight on in. But the unstoppable onslaught charges. The, the Rakan's down. But watch out for Zoom. Still free hitting. The flare is about to pop back up. Zoom keeps them all busy while the rest of JDG clean up. Rookie is down. I repeat. Rookie is down. And Zoom carries the 1v4 in front of the entire team fight. And he's he's going to get more. Flawless just jumps back in. Jackie Love free hitting once again. You need to get this 80 carry of Invictus Gaming. Alts behind. Bavoy Check takes it. the challenge. And they he win it over. The Balan and Duke still alive. But Flawless does enough. Zoom still here. The Dumpling Brothers are the true story of JDG. And it's a 3v2 situation. JD Gaming could still very well close this game right now. But Only the supporting cast left for IG. There's an Ocean Drake and a double Infernal. Not only can they take the fight, they can heal this up. Ning is back. And JDG will not end it here. Baron up and available. And now we see where the true game lies. Clement, again. Uh, you know, Liu Mao, really good engage onto Ning to start this off. But Ning, with the quick fingers, is actually able to get his ult off. Hexic ultimatum to dodge out on a lot of the damage. And just look, this fight was basically held together by Zoom. They actually lost one member first, but Jackie Love cannot step forward. The Demonic Ascension is zoning everyone away from that team fight, and the later portions were even crazier. Jackie Love able to go towards the back line, dodge out on the never move from uh, from Swain, and snipe out Voy during that entire fight with the Killer Instinct. Jackie Love that got, was a key play he got He got two stacks worth onto Zoom of second skin and still could not kill him. He goes, all right, changing targets. And Bavoy just takes that match up like it's too easy. Now for JDG, Baron starts again. And in game three of this match of the week, we find ourselves with close to an answer, but still not even half a one just yet. Baron secured by JDG. 34 kills in this game. IG still clinging on to life. They could still make it and make it a successful Old defense. Zoom with the flank, the never move is onto due quickness now as well. They've got the top laner of IG. Massive pick out here for Jing Dong. They can walk into the base with Baron. They might be able to take this fight. A crucial mistake coming in from Invictus Gaming. Just getting caught out of position. 4v5, last defend. Only one tower left. Can Jackie Love make it happen again? Well, he needs to right now. Last defense here for Invictus Gaming. Their legacy doesn't live on past this game. Ning wants to go in. Hexic Ultimatum with the Galio Ultimate onto Zoom, but still in demonic extension. He just does not die. Jing Dong, what a change their legacy. Invictus Gaming, Jackie Ning Love's on the down. backside, and Rookie as well. Everyone joins the death party, and JD. EG defeat the reigning world champions of IG to give them their first loss of the spring 2019 season. JD Gaming, an impressive start in their own home arena in Beijing. They take down Invictus Gaming. No other team outside of RNG has been able to defeat IG in the LPL for over a year. In a series against Invictus Gaming, you go up and you say, what can we take from them? You never say, we win this, flat out right. JDG coming into today, a lot of confidence. Game one, Levi and Imp. We like the changes, we like bringing them into the roster, but games two and three on your stage, it's flawless, it's Bavoy, who had such a good series. When in Demacia Cup, we said, who is this guy? Two unnamed heroes, I would say. Nobody really suspected them to be the upgrades that JD Gaming were looking for. Remember, they lost Clid to SKT. They lost Loken to TOP, forming up new super teams across the globe. But JD Gaming were left with essentially what were the scraps of the LPL, and they built something beautiful of it. Which didn't look like that on paper, I'm just gonna say flat out. Did not look like a team that could challenge Invictus Gaming, even TOP, 2-0. They got defeated by Invictus Gaming. JDG, a massive comeback here in this series. And just look at Bavoy again. More so Zoom this time on the Swain. But so much damage coming out from mm -hmm. this draft. I, I love how they lock down the mid game. This is a much better meta read coming out from JD Gaming. Yep. That's what's important. Laning phase into mid game, Drake controls. And that's where Invictus Gaming really fell down. They lost the laning phase, but then they lost even harder when they tried to contest for the first mountain. Jackie Love had a lot of success though, even on the Kaiser. It still, still seemed to be the opening though for Invictus Gaming in that game three. Game, game number two, game number one.
was, uh, you know, still Jackie Love. Hey, how can I carry this team? And from Victor's Gaming, yes, it was not maybe their usual showing, but it was still enough to say that JDG are looking good here and look like they've recovered. Definitely. There's, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, that game, game three, I felt like IG was going to come back. You yeah. could see Jackie Love was playing in the zone. 1v3 outside their own inhibitor base to snipe out the enemy AD carry, keep themselves yep. alive in the game. You had that feeling that IG, somehow, some way, they're still going to clean this it, fight it up. It was this fight, and you're like, oh, here we go. But it's still Zoom, just unkillable. This is the most insane team fight that we've seen from the LPL so far. You have to remember that JD Gaming have double Infernals. They're 6K up, but they still can't close out the deal right here. Zoom is massive in the front line. You know, he's denying everyone from uh, from finishing up. Jackie Love can't find any entrance, but watch this play here. This should have been a clean finish coming in from JD Gaming, but Jackie Love says, no, I need one more try on this team fight. It's Look, 1v4 just, in this situation right now. Void tries to follow him, and he gets traded off. And Jackie Love is fed there. Like, don't get us wrong. Jackie Love has so much damage. Still could not kill Zoom. Popping lasagnas just meant Jackie Love decided to go for B-Void, but B-Void hit back harder. Yeah, that that was an insane sequence coming out from Jackie. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was. I, I felt like that was a game ender at that point, but somehow he manages to find the AD carry, make sure they don't have the pushing p potential to yeah. actually close it out. And extend it for one more fight. One more fight. <laughs> one more fight if Invictus Gaming got there. Maybe it's a different story. But this time, it's a JDG win. A big series win for them. And a big series for Zoom, who really ramped up towards that third game. Game one, we're like, where is Zoom? On the Renekton, that absolutely flip-flopped. And game three, Zoom, hardest carry. Look at the gold difference. Oh, almost 7k ahead of his counterpart in Duke. And this is turning out to be one of those champions where you cannot give Zoom Swain. Even if it's out of meta, yep. it can always come back and it can always fulfill the same role. And I actually feel like it's kind of a good meta for Swain. Yep. You're talking about mid-game power spikes. You're talking about lane dominance against tanky champions. He has that with the Swain. And it's just so comfortable. So much frontline control coming out. Yep. The way he zoned Jackie Love out of multiple team fights made sure that his team could still play with the lead. And... A lot of times the Wombo combo from IG actually worked. Yeah. A lot of times Camille and Rookie, uh, Camille and the Galia were able to take down uh, Bavoy on the uh, even on the Zaya, mm. but they just couldn't get in any more. If damage. the gold wasn't so far behind, IG win that game. Like, I, if, I feel like they would by that 30 minute mark. If that fight comes through at a very even gold standpoint, IG probably win that game, and it's probably a big difference. But Zoom just so far ahead of Juke and bringing in Juke for game number three. You know, there will be a lot of question marks as to why do you shift up the roster? Why do you change this on game three when the Shy was actually a pretty stable element considering the series? Yeah, but honestly, I don't think Duke played poorly in that series. But the question was that the draft, unlike game two, I feel like the draft was simply inferior. Yeah. You had three losing lanes. You had a composition that could not contest in the mid game whatsoever. And what do you do in the 9.1 meta? You know, the Drakes come up every five minutes. You right. lose the Herald earlier on as well. None of your lanes are ahead. And you have to make riskier plays after riskier plays to just find some footing in the game. So yep. I, I don't blame Duke that much for that game loss. I felt like Duke played fine, but the draft was pretty atrocious. Maybe it's more, yeah, maybe it's more about how uh, Duke fit in rather than Duke himself, about the team and all five players actually moving together as a, as a unit. Mm -hmm. In that draft phase, let's take a step back because when Zoom locked in the Swain, we're going, here, here we go. Yep. This is most likely Zoom. What's Yigal going to do? Because Yigal can also play the Swain. And Yigal picks up the the um, the Urgot. And you're like, okay, Yigal is willing to sacrifice maybe more of his play style. Purely so Zoom gets his time in the sun. And that was a great switch up from Yigal. Actually, Yigal didn't really, is not really known as an Urgot player. Really doesn't touch the champion whatsoever. Not. Galio Zoe, that's what he's mainly known for. Yeah. A great switch to catch a uh, rookie off guard. He's like, uh oh, I just counterpicked myself into a counterpick. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really one of the uh, one of the sore points for the draft right there. There was a bit of a mind games played. It wasn't purely a a a uneducated guess from Mafa, mm. but in the end, JD Gaming they did do the switcheroo and they did get that winning lane in the mid. Because game two was pretty much like a oh IG think they're gonna win this. Oh what's going on? The yeah. draft is fine. 
but it was that IG style of like, yeah, let, let's play. Yeah, Jackie Love Game fun. 2, Game 3 were very different people. I, I just, I'm just going to put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jackie Love Game 2, though, was still okay. Okay. No, no, all right. So on Siva, maybe not. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't I could, I couldn't get through that yeah. sentence without without stumbling. So. And also just the... Uh, I, I feel like there's some coordination issues with the jungler and the bot lane with Invictus Gaming. Both games, they were caught out level 3 gank. And the level 3 ganks were not, you know, unexpected. They were not very... Difficult flash pretty ganks. much at the same time. Go back to the VOD, they're probably 30 seconds apart, if that. Yeah, and you really shouldn't be caught out with those ganks, especially when Ning is already inside the enemy jungle and yeah. knows he's not topside. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. Where, where could he possibly be? Beats me, but... I think it's bot. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I would say, IG, they need to play a bit safer in the bot side. There's a lot of mistakes early game from them coming out. Mm. Uh, overall, still a great team fight. I'm really excited to see where Jackie Love can go. Like, people did have him kind of uh, pigeonholed into a position behind SMLZ, behind iBoy. You know, yep. Frost Kern was saying, Jackie Love's good, but I don't think he's going to reach these heights. I've completely changed my opinion on Jackie Love. I, I think he can go beyond these people. I would agree with that, but I'd also agree that before, after that series, I'm now expecting him to reach new heights. Yes. Well, not the same heights as like Uzi and uh, Jackie yes. Love after one series, but there's definitely still potential in that bottom lane, especially when Imp is in the mix as well. For JDG, a big series win over Invictus Gaming, and now standings are absolutely out the window, because Invictus Gaming have their first loss. Oh my, where even are they? Oh, they're third, third place, in third place. They're okay. still not that far behind, but the new kings of the LPL suiting and Fun plus Phoenix. Who would have thought the Suiting Super Team are on top IG? They still haven't burst just yet, though. So that is going to be a pretty intense matchup. Now I'm more excited for teams to verse JD Gaming. And I'm actually quite surprised because coming into this, I thought, oh, it's going to be a 2 0 Invictus Gaming after how they performed again against FBX. So it's, it's a good surprise to me that JDG are not going to be bottom of the pack there are so many stack teams in the lpl right oh, now yeah. suiting fpx and victus gaming still definitely up there and then sino dragons kind of the surprising ones for me in the top half of the bracket oh, yeah. everyone's saying this was like a 15th place team but the top you, you just look like top jd as well on that list this is going to be a super exciting season with all these teams that frankly are world caliber teams yeah, we haven't eyes. even seen we haven't, well, that, that'll be proven, I guess, throughout yeah. the year as well. We haven't even seen teams like Victory 5 that much on stream. Sino Dragon we've seen, I think, once or maybe, no, maybe w only once. Yeah, once uh, against we WE. Didn't, we didn't get to see their Snake game, or at least, I don't remember casting. There's so yeah. many games. <laughs> There's like 16 teams in the LPL now. It's very hard to keep track of the games. But uh, it's, it's now past the point of like, I wonder who's going to surprise us. It's like now to the point of who is going to be so competitive. And we'll get a further answer tomorrow because this is the last day of week two. Starting into week three tomorrow, Raz and Iberia will take you through. And that very same question. Now, in a different world, Clement, Sino Dragon and Vici Gaming would be absolutely average. I completely disagree. Vici Gaming are so exciting. And Sino Dragon is somehow up top. Oh, yeah. There's so many good points to watch out right there. If Sino Dragon is in Vici Gaming, I would say the bot lane is the place you look at. Galad versus Puff out from Vici Gaming. Two newcomers that not a lot of people expected to be amazing, yeah. but they've been showing up both in the laning phase and the team fights. We got some praise for Sino Dragon as well, but OMG and V5 with the second matchup, and OMG uh, did not look the greatest. What's wrong? Yeah, you I, don't like OMG again? I, I, I like OMG. Their drafting is just a little bit out there. It, like, they're, they're the type of team that's going to draft like, three, yeah. three losing lanes. Which is a shame because, I mean, maybe it's a shame, maybe it's not. There were some real big highlights for OMG. We haven't seen much Victory yeah. 5, though, on stream, so that's a good excitement. If, if you don't, a good excitement. <laughs> if you don't know about Victory 5, another new team of the LPL, but it's got some experienced members. Like Solo laners are going to be the matchup for, for there. There's two great assassin players in Korn and Icon, the best talent player we had in the LPL in 2018, and Icon has just been killing it on Akali and Jace. Yep. For the top lane, Ala and Jinu. Yeah. Oh boy, that, that'll be that's good. hype. The Immortal Sword against the Jax player, the Fiora player. Yeah. of the LPL currently. That'll be pretty good. That's coming up tomorrow with Raz and Iberia. From Clement and myself, a happy Chinese New Year to you. We'll be back afterwards. Thank you so much to our production team, and we'll see you after Chinese New Year, but tune in tomorrow at 5 p.m.